niggas do think y'all white. College don't mean shit. Y'all niggas. And you gonna be niggas forever. Just like us. Niggas. You're not niggas. My black, 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 my black is beautiful. Beauty to me, true beauty, um, is in the spirit of a person. Intelligence, confidence, self-awareness, and art. Beauty, man, would be somebody just embodying themselves and truly, um, you know, exemplifying on who they are. Everybody has their own form of beauty. And I feel like the more you embrace yourself, the more you embrace your beauty. So beauty is simply what's in somebody. When I hear black beauty, I think it's more so someone classifying beauty to a skin color. Black people, our skin comes in many different shades. It's from like tan to black, I guess. Oh, that's beautiful to me. Black beauty is the same as black excellence, in a way. So much beauty in black, you know, that's such a huge question. Um, I love everything about black people, from the ingenuity to our ability to adapt and survive. Um, we've managed to, in a way, thrive in a, in a foreign land, and to me that's, that's beautiful, the struggle that we're still going through and, and working to overcome is shaping out a, a potentially beautiful people. For some reason I think about the black woman, which is kind of interesting. My definition of a strong black man is intelligence. Somebody who can take care of themselves and their family. Make sure that they take care of their business, whether it's for their family, friends, just people around them. Is a colored man that's about his business. Strong black man, there's many definitions. I know, I got friends and fathers weren't there for them, but my father was there, and he also, he also helped them. So like, I seen the way it impacted them when not having a father, but having a father to figure. Well, I think that black men are portrayed as being, um, sometimes as criminals, like we all are thugs, like we, um, all trying to get away with, with, with something. And I think that these, these media images uh, persist a lot of times to our, our detriment. We all dumb and we all gangsters. We not, we, we not all gangsters and we are not all dumb. That we have to be some macho, hyper-masculine animal almost. I, I hate the fact that media portrays and tries to glorify the hood. You know what I'm saying? And when I say that, it's, it's in the music, man. Um, and that's our biggest form of, uh, I guess, exploitation uh, as black males is our music. Because most of our hip hop artists are males. And most of the people that we look up to nowadays are these people that are getting that fast money. And so what comes with fast money is a fast life. And within that fast life is, you know, drugs and all types of other nonsense. Um, it seems like the media portrays the African American man as um, one who, who has a lack of knowledge or an education. Yeah. What we don't do as black men is own up to them. Because it can only be called, a media can only report what's being out there. Us as black men, like from my age group, taking that initiative and also accepting that challenge not being afraid to set an example because you don't want to be called certain this the best way to help change the stereotype and improve the image is if we portray and, and sell a different image for ourselves instead of letting a different party or group of people portray us today our community has we have no idea you know we don't we don't understand all of, a lot of us don't understand you know the black businesses that that used to um, be in existence and you know and we don't care to take the initiative to actually try to invest in more black businesses for our own community. Um, I think if we took a look back at Black Wall Street in our history, it would inspire us to rebuild our community.
You can put your hands down, Jazz. No way. Dude's got a gun. Next thing you know, I got six warning shots in my back. I watched the man go down. Like, he just fucking just killed him. Period. It wasn't no trying to protect himself or nothing. He killed him. Shots fired. Male down. Um, black male. Maybe 20. Um, black revolver. Black handgun. Tamir Rice, who was 12 years old, died later in hospital. Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager, was shot down by a white neighborhood watchman who claimed self-defense. It actually kind of disappoints me. It makes me feel sad. And it actually angers me a little bit on the inside because it's, it's unfair. It's unfair that black men are classified to that type of, to being that type of person or seen as that type of person to where a, a police officer or something just has to kill him on sight to where people do worse things and then they just get off with so much as a slap on the hand. For the second time in as many weeks, a grand jury has found the evidence is just not there to charge a white police officer in connection with the death of a black civilian. The police really could care less about black people and especially young black men, young black men. I feel like we are being purposely eradicated at a phenomenal rate. Frustrated, angry, uh, a lot of things, disgusting, but it's not new. I see it in his eyes, it hurt him a lot. It was definitely like being shot like an animal, it was almost like putting someone to execution. What's making it realer now is that we're getting killed by the people that are supposed to be protecting us. You know, so a system that was put in play to avoid things like this is now the system that is taking our lives. We were not brought here as men and women. We were brought here as cattle. We um, are real, real rebellious. So, I don't know in what form. Um, I don't want to say physically, but we look at history, and we always say history repeats itself. We're, we're, we're for something. Wake up! If I wasn't black, I wouldn't be as cool as I was. <laughs> like, I couldn't see myself being any other race. Be too powerful as a people to be safe. I love being black. I love black people. I believe black people are the hallmark of this entire world. Um, I believe we are the creators. We are the first creators. So um, never have I had any doubt or any being any any way, any form of shame. Man, I grew up with a strong black mentality, a strong black family, knowing that no matter what, you had to overcome, you know? Um, graduating in 2013, coming from historical black college, most of the success I see is from black men. And when you get back home, when you get back into the real world, if you don't stay connected and tied into those circles, you can get kind of lost. It makes me feel like, actually, it makes me feel like I have a challenge to rise up to because of the way that people view black men in society today. I'm put into a box because I'm already striked out being a black man well, being black and being a man, um, and then being gay on top of that in America. Three things that nobody really wants in the workforce, but they settle for. Your, your accomplishments are celebrated in a different way when you're here or at a different HBCU. When you get out into the world, those, aren't, those accomplishments aren't celebrated the same. And it can almost hurt your confidence and make you forget who you are and what you've done and how hard you've worked to get to that point being in the own, being the youngest or in a room full of different colors. What W.E.B. Du Bois talked about um, living within the veil and without the veil, I feel like as a black man, on a daily basis, you know, certain environments that I go in, I can take off the veil, you know, and necessarily be who I am naturally. And when I step into a different environment, I have to necessarily put on the veil just to become accepted. I feel like we all should play the big brother role. 
Um, not necessarily saying, you know, do this, do that, because this is the way to go. No. But if you see the next man doing wrong, and you know it's wrong, just tell him like, hey, bruh, you already know that's trash. I realize that whether I want to be or not, I'm somebody's role model. And, and I have a decision to make as to what I give them to watch. Black men, young, young black men, black boys are gonna look to me because I am a black man for something to, to be like, for footsteps to follow in. And, and that's, that's not a choice that I have. That's the reality of the situation. And so I try to let that govern not who I am, but at least what image I'm trying to put out, put out there, you know. Know the book, but don't live by the book. They're waiting for you to mess up one time. One time is all it takes for you to mess up. And then so many labels and stereotypes thrown on you that one time that you mess up. So you have to be smart. You have to plan each and every move of your life out. You have to be strong. You have to be confident in who you are. Do you respect your, your mother. Respect the woman that's going to bear your children. Take care of your children. When possible, educate yourself. Doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a four-year degree. Go to trade school, get a skill, get something they can't take away from you. I'm gonna stand out. But is that a good thing or a bad thing? And it's up to us as black men to remember we're gonna stand out. We're gonna be intimidating, not the intimidating. We're gonna be the intimidator. But that's not a bad thing. You have to use it. You have to learn to when you walk in the room, that room is now yours. Now you can either use it to your advantage or you can let it hurt you. Shout out to all the black men, of course all the black ladies, the queens. Black men, we kings at the same time, so let's act like kings.